Okay, so here we are on the user interface of the Nighthawk X10. Now, they refer to their user interface and indeed the tools that you use as Netgear Genie. Now, the Netgear Genie can be accessed like I'm looking at it now <clears throat> via a web browser uh, by going to routerlogin.net slash index and then logging in with the credentials you created during setup. It is worth mentioning that when you set this device up for the first time, as soon as you connect your PC to this device on the network, a pop-up will appear and the browser will open automatically, plug and play style, uh, just to help you set up this device for the first time. And there's lots of automated ways to do it and um, lots of ways to do it manually. If you connect it to an existing uh, switch setup that you have uh, connected to another router, then you can actually clone those settings over as you see fit. What I've gone for this time is a completely fresh install. And as you can see, there's only the one device connected and this is the PC that I'm using. Once again, there is a desktop um, application of the Netgear Genie, which is pretty much the same thing as you can see, but I thought I'd go for the uh, web browser interface just because there's a few more options on there. And also the this seems to, have, you have to sync it up with their cloud service and lots of other stuff that I'm not really gonna do for this video. So I'm gonna concentrate on the direct access interface, but you can access almost all the features of this device over the network and the internet. But today we're just gonna focus on the network access point. So straight away, we've got a basic and advanced settings. So of course you can flip between them. Um, if we do want to check out the um, uh, more detailed settings, we can open up the advanced thing. And of course, if you know more about your routers and your networking, this is where you can do some real big changes. And this is also whereby you can change the amount of access individual users have. Now, straight away, you may have noticed while I'm flicking through this uh, menu here, that not only have we got a way to control uh, the access of those LAN ports on the rear, but a greater degree of control over the individual networks, because this device supports 2.4 gigahertz, the older style, five gigahertz, which is pretty much the standard these days, and of course, that new one, the 60 gigahertz connection. That if you've got a device that supports it, you are getting some insane speeds by comparison. But do bear in mind that once again, there aren't a lot of devices that support that at the moment. Moreover, this only really works if you're in the same room as the router, because it doesn't pass through brick walls and stuff in the same way Wi-Fi does. So do bear that in mind. But if you do have a device that supports it, this router will do the job. You can also set up guest networks. So if you have people staying with you or you just want to create a temporary setup, then you can create sub internet uh, networks too that you can completely control. And this, this is one of the many features you're gonna see on this video that aren't available with the router you get from an ISP as well as a pretty standard router. Now inside here, we can set up different wireless networks. We can set up pretty much everything here, but for now, we're gonna make our way back to the basic settings just to keep it simple. So straight away, it's just gonna find out what our internet connectivity is. We can also, of course, go more into the Wi-Fi settings and then find out more about changing the password, setting up individual networks or creating better network maps. There we are, we can change the password to something else if we want, as well as change the name of it very, very easily. Um, and I think one of the things that I like about this router isn't just the fact that it's really powerful and fast and all that lark, but also that they've managed to do that but still keep it relatively simple. Um, and that's quite a nice option there because it's quite good to get a lot of this other stuff here out the way where it, this device, because it's got that quad core CPU and memory, um, it's a lot smarter than most NAS. It can afford itself a lot more luxuries that standard basic routers can't have. But if we make our way back to that main setting, attached devices we can look at. I'm gonna connect a USB stick now into one of the available USB ports because I think that may be quite advantageous later in the video. So let's get a USB connected. And straight away, it's recognized um, our USB device straight away. And so again, this isn't gonna be the first router in the world that's ever had um, support of USB. That would be madness. But what makes this device interesting is what you can do with it. Because not only can you distribute and access multimedia from a USB drive, uh, to your local network and access it over the cloud and internet, but a Plex Media Server can be set up on this device. Um, so again, one of the main reasons people are going for this is just because 
of the fact it supports a Plex media server. I mean, this is something that, and transcoding, of course, the very fact that these are things that you can do um, on a router of all things can eliminate a NAS in your network as well as um, a switch, because this does have the capabilities of a switch. It has link aggregation. It has a 10 gigabit ethernet port on the rear in fiber. But going back to all the settings here, back at the top there, we've got parental controls, of course, so you can set up who can access and how. ReadyShare is the one that lets us distribute our USB drive. There's our USB disk that I've attached inside, and you can make it shareable with a localized network, the internet, or if it's a printing device or with Vault, you can do um, a backup USB. So if you connect a USB drive to this Netgear router, you can then have backups with ReadyShare on your desktop um, devices that will back up via the router onto that USB drive. So it's a great backup tool as well. So again, going in, we can, there's all manner of stuff we can do here, but for now, you've got an idea of what the USB drive can do. So moving on, attached devices. Once again, we've only just been into that, telling us about the devices that are connected. And some of them, of course, are desktop devices. So if we click on my desktop device, there's our MAC address and IP there, and it's how it's connected. The quality of service, of course, the QoS. This gives us an idea to do a quick speed test of our available internet network and more. Um, now, this device, when I first set it up, it did install a bunch of new updates. So do remember when you set this up for the first time to get all of those new updates. You don't have to sign up to Netgear's accounts to do that, but you may need that to do some of the other latter stuff like adding new applications. Um, we already had a quick look at um, the parental controls. Now ReadyShare is that one where we're distributing that USB and Cloud Backup. If we set up an Amazon Drive account or an S3, what we can do here is that we can back up the content of a USB that we connect to the router and back it up to the cloud. <clears throat> and that can work vice versa as well. Quite useful indeed to have an off-site backup working through your router. Again, something that you would normally buy a NAS to do. And another one of the many reasons why this could well replace the NAS in your network. Guest network, of course, is how we um, monitor the access points of those who we've given temporary access to. Uh, and we, of course, we've got the Netgear downloading application. Now with this, if we enable it, this gives us the ability to um, have a download server. So much like a NAS will let you download things over HTTP, BT, FTP, NZB, and more, the Netgear router supports these download types. So you can enter um, where you want uh, the file to download from, and of course you can enter a URL, or if you've got um, the beginning files, the sort of opening files for that download, you can use the USB that we've attached inside, as well as set up um, where the downloads are gonna be going to, presumably on that USB disk, because this device doesn't really have any internal storage. That's what those USB ports are for. Likewise, you should be able to configure a network drive as well, which means from there, you will be able to send downloaded information to a network source. Again, you could go for a very basic NAS and then send information over to it. Um, and of course, here at the bottom is our Plex Media Server. So straight away, we can enable our Plex Media Server. And this may take an extra moment to get this downloading up and running, so we may see a slight delay. I haven't done this before. But what's quite interesting is not only can you uh, utilize a USB drive to um, you know, have access to the media you want to distribute in Plex, but you can add a network connection, which is quite nice. Um, and if we go to OpenPlex again, I've never opened this before, so let's find out what's gonna happen. And also take a good moment there to look at the fact that with this, you also get three months, uh, three free months of Plex Pass, and that is the premium based subscription service. Um, so if we open Plex, it's gonna take an extra little moment there. Do you know what? We'll save Plex for the other video, actually. I'm saying all that. I said I was gonna make two of them, and we're gonna leave that till next time. So again, this is where the USB drive would have been used for that Plex database. And when we make the video for Plex, we will make sure that we use a Plex account, and of course, upload some media for that video. But that's really the basic package that this router gives you. I'm not gonna say that this user interface rivals that of QTS from QNAP or DSM from Synology, but it's definitely got more going for it than most back-end softwares 
with their routers or switches. And moreover, the fact that this has got lots of options that are only available on switches typically, as well as having a powerful NAS background uh, network attached storage capabilities, I should say, and of course being an excellent router, does put this very much in the forefront of people's choices as far as I'm concerned. Now if we go through these advanced settings, here is where we can look at some of the other stuff that's going on, and this is where things can get super intense. If you don't know your way around networking, maybe don't play with these settings, or at least keep your finger near that reset, reset to defaults. So this is where we set up IPs, over here is more information about that network, some of these options we of course have already seen before, and in here is where we can look at things such as our wireless access net, wired, um, wired access network, and our LAN setup. And this is also where we can start setting up port trunking and link aggregation. And again, there's our speed test from earlier, and you can do stuff about changing the name of your device. Now we've ready shared, this is where we can look at the media server capabilities, because remember, you don't need to rely on Plex. You can attach a USB drive uh, to this device that's full of media uh, without using Plex, and this will just enable a media server. This media server will then appear um, on your PlayStation, your smart TV, your Xbox, your iPod. This will pick it up as a standard DLNA supported device. On top of that, you can get picked up on TiVo, and of course, anything that supports iTunes um, server uh, DLNA, this can do it too. And of course, you can, if you need to give remote application passwords for things like the Sonos sound system, that's where that lives. And again, you can scan the media files on the USB and it will find all the available media um, for the distribution. We're not going to wait around for that too long because we've got stuff to do. If we look at ReadyCloud, this is where we set up our ability to access the contents of these USB disks via the internet. This gives us the sort of thing that you only get with a NAS. The ability to connect a USB drive to this device, and again, it doesn't have to be one drive, you can connect it to a RAID-enabled USB um, storage device, much cheaper than a NAS mostly, and then have internet and network access to it as you would a NAS. Same thing goes with a printer, to create a network printer, to run the printer into these USB ports. And finally, ReadyShare is the, um, the ability to uh, back up files and folders and more from a Windows-based PC onto your USB drive. Again, completely free. And cloud backup, as we discussed, straight there onto the cloud. Security, here's all of our stuff with regards to parental controls. Once again, here's our stuff with regards to access our permissions, blocking sites and IPs, and blocking individual services to individual IPs to make sure they can't use them. Um, if you want to set up an email server or get email notifications, here's where you live. And finally, if we carry on to the download server settings, this is where we can tinker with a lot of those settings that were in that download server. In administration, we can look about all the individual attached devices. This is where we saw those USBs earlier and more information on that, as well as logs and more information with regard to the device itself live. An advanced setup, of course, this is where things get crazy. This is where we can set up the bridging mode between different devices and different networks. This is where we set up that port trunking or link aggregation, where we can attach two of those ports together to effectively double the upload and download. Dynamic DNS makes sure that everything's moving non-stop without you having to worry about a change of IP. VPN, if you've got an existing virtual private network account, you can add this to this device, or you can use uh, the Netgear's own one that they're signed up for. You know, we'll leave that there, why not? Let's get that done. On top of that, we've got everything else you're ever going to need, UNP, UPNP for uh, multimedia distribution, USB settings, just to let us know, so you can disable the ability for USB drives. And all of this, remember, can be accessed over the internet, not just via your localized network. And of course, a much better, uh, bigger and better analytical breakdown of everything that's going on. And there is our link aggregation setting in full. So if you connect those two devices there and you go into the other setting to t tinker around with the port forwarding and the truncating, I'm uh, sorry, triggering, you have got yourself security and speed. It's definitely something to bear in mind. But I'm going to wrap things up here because next video will be about uh, Plex Media Server being set up on this device. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more, if you're interested about this device, do visit the guides at span.com. If you want to see the more wordy version of all of this about the Netgear X10, then do send me a message uh, and visit nascompares.com or find me on Twitter and send me a message at Robbie on the Tube. Thanks for watching.
Thanks for watching down there. Click those videos. It's fantastic.